In a recent video I did, I made reference to the fact I needed to do my VDK test. Well, that brought a lot of questions from folks about what is that? What am I talking about? Well, vicinal diketones are compounds that are created during the fermentation process. We know one of them very well because we commonly refer to it as diacetyl. So first off, if you want a more complete scientific description of the chemistry involved, I'm going to put a link down below in the description from uh, Beer and Brewing, where it's a really simple five paragraph discussion because it goes in a lot more technical discussion around the amino acids and what really is happening. But it's an easy read and, and very much worth it if you're at all interested. For most of us home brewers, though, there's really only two things we need to know. First off, these always occur during fermentation. You gotta accept the fact they're there. But more importantly, how do you manage it? What do you do about it? And that's the purpose of this video. I'm gonna do what's commonly called a force diacetyl test, where we're gonna basically force the situation, the conditions that would manifest into diacetyl later in your beer, and make sure that we're clear of that barrier before we go to packaging. It's a very simple process. It's one I'd always heard about, but there was, I don't know, some mystery around it. I never did it. Well, I started doing it and I kind of laugh at myself because it is just that easy. Okay, so I'm back with you now, and this is the moment of truth. We're gonna test our sample. Again, I'm just looking for any of that hint of diacetyl. Want to make sure it's not there. And I did want to make one point. A handful of days ago, this beer is fermented, it was done, it was dry hopped, I tasted it, it really tastes good. I also though, right away did this test knowing that there's probably going to be a bit of that diacetyl presence. And sure enough, it was. I mean, it was pretty strong. And that's why this is important. If you're just going by the uh, fermentation complete, no activity on your bobber, that type of thing. For me, I checked my gravity several days in a row. It was very stationary. So, you know, fermentation is done. You'd think, okay, I'm good to go. I can put it in the kegs. If I would have done that with this beer, it would have been one of those situations where the first week maybe it's all tasted pretty good. The next week it's like, no, nah, it's really not as good as I remember. The following weeks all of a sudden like, this is not very good at all. And that's because it was packaged too early. So enough said, let's pop the lid off of this and I'll let you know what I think. Mm, okay, right away in the nose, smells clean, which is awesome. In the taste, no real presence there either. And again, the taste is not the best because it's warmed up beer. But uh, it's showing me that there is through the whole forced diacetyl test here, there's no problem with that. So what I'm gonna to do tomorrow is go ahead and keg this up, free up my fermenter for the next batch of beer. I need to try to get it done before Christmas and we'll go from there. So again, I hope this helped you out. I hope you see how easy it is to do. It is gonna tackle one of the biggest problems that a lot of us have and certainly have the potential to have 
and that's packaging your beer and having a D-bomb later. So let's avoid that. Thanks for watching and uh, we'll brew some more beer. See you later.